How's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today we've got a very <laughs> special guest. For those of y'all who followed tournament bass fishing for a while, this face is familiar to you. You shouldn't need an introduction, but for those of y'all who might not follow the tournament scene or are maybe new to the sport of bass fishing, this is E squared Edwin Evers. And just walking through your trophy room in your house yesterday was uh, I've been blessed, dude. It That's, was it was yeah. inspiring to say the yeah. least. Bassmaster Classic trophy, MLF Angler of the Year, MLF Red Crest, countless professional tournament wins and how many top tens have you made in your career I have no idea. probably a hundred no. plus top tens <laughs> and you guys have been loving the uncut style of bass fishing where i just go fishing you see all my decisions you see my successes and my failures and so i wanted to kind of show you guys an inside look uncut at a professional one of the best professional anglers in history and kind of see what he does on an uncut because you guys get to see that a little bit on you know the the, the live stream for tournament coverage but not on, on youtube usually so i thought we'd go on a beautiful lake here in oklahoma today we're going to be what are we going to be doing today you know i haven't been over here in a long time and the grass has really grown up so I, you have to think you know i mean you're looking at this frogs you know yeah. i mean and, and and with the conditions you know maybe we have to stop, slow down and start flipping some of this stuff so it's it's a really neat lake it's a public lake here in oklahoma it's full of grass we don't have a lot of lakes here in oklahoma it's got grass is one of the few yeah but uh you know it's it's that time of year i don't have super high expectations you know <laughs> it's it's a fall and that transition but totally. uh I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited yeah. to be on your channel, man. Thanks a lot for having me. And it's, it's an honor to, uh, you know, follow your channel and you and Hannah, just they're amazing, mm -hmm. amazing people. And, and I, appreciate uh, it. I wish the world had a whole bunch more of, of you two in it. So. And, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do on this channel is, is you know, grow and, and get people to be, you know, good members of society. But yeah. with all that said, we're going to hop on the water and this is going to be two and a half plus hours of just Edwin and I fishing. You're going to get to see, of course, <laughs> usually my decision process, which is an amateur. Now you're going to get to see Edwin's decision process because we're in his boat today on his bodies of water, hopefully catching some big bass. So let's yeah. get this thing started. Let's do it. So conditions we have this morning, it is uh, about nine o'clock, correct? Mm -hmm. Nine yep. o'clock in the, in the morning, early fall. How yes. many cold fronts have we had here in Oklahoma? Uh, if you consider like the low got into 50s, I guess maybe that's a cold front. I don't know that we've really <laughs> had any. Maybe one, you know. It, it, it. It, it, there has been one spell where it's cooled down a little bit. Um, you know, the water temperature is definitely starting to fall. And I think a big part of that is because the days are getting shorter. You know, there's yeah. not near as many hours of sunlight. Uh, you know, we're it's daylight till 9 o'clock, you know, all summer long. You know, now it's daylight to, what, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Correct. So, that has a big part of it. And I always think that's a big part of the fall transition and fish moving. It's not always about the water temperature. I think a more it's about the amount of sunlight in a day. You know, I think that's a big trigger to it. Okay, got it. So we got that going for us. So the, the water temperature you're saying hasn't really cooled down a whole lot. Eh, it's actually 73. 73 compared to what was it? Oh, it had to be summer. 90s, you know, low okay. 90s, high, you know, mid to upper 80s. This lake's a little bit different. It probably stays a little cooler. Um, it's got a little water flow going through it and probably a few springs in here because the water's so clear. Got it. So, okay, we have seen a little bit of a decrease in temperature. And obviously, you talked about grass. We've yeah. Got, we've got tons of matted hydrilla. Is this hydrilla before? We got milfoil. This milfoil. is all milfoil in here. Yep. Matted milfoil, which means in your mind, topwater frog the first thing you throw is that usually what you you know we're kind of limited because you don't I, I don't think we have a lot of options you know when you have a big mat like this you know you've got a frog or you can really flip it so yeah, uh, yeah. you know obviously we could throw different things in these little lanes and little openings uh, but you know to be effective is always probably the biggest thing and, and yeah we're gonna have to try to catch them on a frog okay. there's not a lot of things we can do in it perfect I'm excited I'm excited for folks to see your <laughs> decision process. And we are, like you said, limited with the amount of things we can do. Yeah. You know, for me to, to get a, you know, I, I, I probably, I would go pretty quick. You know, if, if you're asking me, like, to get the decision process going, if we were treating this like a practice day or yeah, a, yeah. a day on a Saturday that somebody just goes out fishing, you know, I, I chose to run up, up the lake. I narrowed down the playing field, so to say. So like where you have this big lake, I, I narrowed it all down into this neck, thus hopefully increasing my chances. Okay. And it's also just a great time of the year, you know, as this water cools, the shallower water is gonna cool faster than, than the main body of water. So that we ran true. up to the upper end, uh, just to put things more in our favor, more, you know, less options, uh, less places a fish could hide. Okay. Uh, and I just, I always like starting up in a creek, you know, this time of year, you know, in the back yeah. ends of pockets or up in creeks. You're saying because the creek will almost feel more like fall before, before yeah, the main lake does. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. 
And it, it's, a, it's a little easier to break it down quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a smaller area, you know, if, if they're gonna be in the creek, at the mouth of the creek, or, you know, somewhere in between. I like that. I talk about efficiency a lot on my channel. And when bass move so much in the fall, you gotta be efficient. So you gotta find an area you can break down quickly. Yep. Hey, almost forgot to say, subscribe to Edwin's channel because he's got a great channel. And his Thank cameraman, you. Chris, back there, just a glorious human being. And he's just such a hard worker. He and is. Y'all need to subscribe. And, and, you know, we teach instructionals on my channel. Edwin does the same thing on his. And so if you're Oklahoma-based, I'm sure his videos are going to apply to you, you know, seasonally a little more than mine will. And once again, I don't have to talk about his accolades. Like, he uh, knows what he's talking about. Sometimes, thank you, sometimes thank you. I have to go prove myself on video. You know, the, I give a tip, I actually have to show that I know what I'm talking <laughs> about. You've won a Bassmaster Classic, so you don't really have to prove anything. Uh, <laughs> you know, one neat thing about it is we're both doing something we love to do. And, exactly. Uh, both, I'm, I feel very blessed to be, you know, out here fishing today. Just, yep. whether we catch them or we don't, it's uh, pretty awesome getting to do something we love to do. You'd think there'd be one up there at those logs. Is the water yeah. down? No, it's actually a little bit high. Shoot, okay, so it's yeah. normally pretty shallow in here. Yeah, this lake doesn't fluctuate a lot. You know, they use the lake above it to keep this lake constant. Okay. And uh, um, this lake just doesn't have a lot of fluctuation to it. So these fish, you know, they're not as shy to get really, really shallow on this lake. They could be all the way up there on that bank in six inches of water. Try not to get in too big a hurry. That's one one mistake I make a lot with a frog is is, you know, we got such calm conditions, kind of early in the morning, water's still pretty cool. I just, but that's a great thing about both of us. I can work mine really slow. You're working yours a little bit quicker. We'll kind of figure out what they want. They seem to be, Correct. you know, a frog bite so many times is uh -huh. is how fast or slow you're moving that thing. Yep. yep. I tend to move it way too fast to, to start so off. So do with. I. So thank you for thank you for pointing out that I'm moving it fast. No, you're not. I, I like it because I'm moving mine slow. So let's. Well, it'll help. Okay. Eliminate this process a little bit quicker. Yeah. So you're saying like when let's say a high school team tournament in practice, anglers should kind of work the lures Absolutely. at different cadences. Yeah. That's what I love about having you in my boat today. You know, it's a we can we'll be able to try different stuff, different colors. You know, throughout the day till we get this that, that bite figured true. out. How long do you normally fish a certain lure before you switch? I know that's a really hard topic yeah. to answer, but like if we're in a giant grass field, would you go like three or four pockets before you start flipping or would you go a whole uh, mile long stretch? I don't know. It's uh, I, like we're kind of limited to what we can do in here, but I'm going to have both of the. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> You can't see. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Is your rod okay? Yeah, we're I, fine. Nothing's we're broke. Nothing's broke. Dad, give it. <laughs> Are you coming for that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I don't fish with a lot of people up front. You can blame me 100%. As long as your rod's good. Mine's yeah, I wanna, good. I want to look back at that footage to see if, if I was in the way. No, you weren't in the way. I just, I thought you're right. I thought, I thought I heard you cast. <laughs> I thought, well, he should be good. I'm surprised that I, uh, I caught that rod midair. You did good. I thought good. it was, I thought it was flying out of the boat. You did good. See, in the uncut, y'all get to see all this. <laughs> if this was our YouTube video, yeah. if this was Evan's video, he would have cut that out because that's, uh, that's uh, very interesting. I'm fixing to have you back in action. There you <laughs> go, buddy. Sorry about that, Tyler. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. I do have a backlash, but I'll take a backlash over a broken rod. You'd already thrown. Had I? I thought you had. I thought I heard it. Yeah. Maybe it's still going. I think the I might have rushed you a little bit. The, no, the problem is I like to uh, keep my rod tip high for no no reason. So No. Hey, I'm working a frog. I can understand why you would. That's what happened. I will uh, make note and not do it again, Tyler. <laughs> Don't kick me out. Off I'm in your, channel I'm in, already. I'm in your boat. I can't kick you out. Okay. How bad is the backlash? No, no, not bad at all. We're good. Uh, That's something else cool, you know, you've got a, I think a bluegill colored frog, I got a shad colored frog on too. Got it. So, we're gonna like... Well, the, the bottom, I look, look at the bottom of our frogs, I think they're... Oh, actually, you're right. I mean, it's a pretty colored frog, it's a shad, bluegill. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bluegill, frog. yeah. It's a cool but, frog. But, but then again, like the colors, like yeah. the, the silhouetteness is yeah. not that different. Okay, we're back in action. Alright, back in action. I will make more 
No, that's my fault, 100%. <laughs> Yeehaw. Come on, bitch. Oh, ooh, was that a... F no, I think I just worked my frog really fast. It sounded really good. So, so you, Chris, you're not rolling the whole time. Are we getting audio the whole time of Edwin? Perfect, okay. Come on, froggy boys. Now they talk about bait equals bass. Is that always the case? Well, you and I both know we've seen shad everywhere, you know, and yeah. still can't catch a bass off of it. But, you know, I think it's important. You know, a lot of the stuff that I think I'm seeing in here, you know, so far today is really little bitty. You know, it might be little bitty bluegill or something. Uh, yeah, they're very small. Bass don't even go after those things. They're not the size of bass we are wanting no, to catch that's today. Correct. I think you're going to catch one, Tyler, when we get up to the logs. Okay. The power of positive thinking, right? Yes. Rick Klon said that, right? I don't know. I think he believed that, like, the, you had to send good vibes. There's a lot of things he probably said. <laughs> he might have had his feet in the water when he was talking, too. <laughs> might have cut out. <laughs> Man. How'd you do it? Oh. oh, you're good. Long cast? I was just trying, trying. Huh. Is that a good, you, you like that frog a lot? Is that one of your favorites? Yeah, the pop and pad perch is my favorite frog. I have not fished much Mississippi River, you know, cheese stuff. Right. Because I know you don't want a popping frog for that. But most of the grass that I fish is like this. Our popping still works. <laughs> See some stuff moving every now and then. I like, know. Like, like we ought to get a bite. <laughs> Gotten a little bit deeper than when we started. Yeah. We'll get up here a little bit more and it'll drop off. Oh, yeah. God. You're saying that creek is where people haven't gone, you think? No, there's one, oh, one over there. there. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I really think we'll catch them in there. Ooh. What was it? Some movement. Some movement. So your team's Texas A&M. Yes. Mine's OU. I know. We're going to be playing each other soon. I know. What do you think about that? I just can't believe they're changing conferences. This is crazy. I think it's bad for OU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it work out good for A&M? Like, what have you noticed? I, I think it'll be good for A&M because unless they keep East and West and just add a team to each, I think that we're not gonna have to play Bama every year. Oh, really? So yeah, if, if they do a pod system, it'll be us, you guys, Arkansas, and Texas in the pod. And I feel good about those odds if we have a healthy yeah. team. I feel bad for the Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Tennessee pod. Right. Or Mississippi State pod. How would Florida fall into that one? Yeah. yeah I don't know. I would think. Geographically, that would be Florida. Golly, come on. If I was a bass, I would eat that. I feel like you would have been a bass by now. <laughs> you've, caught it. you've caught enough. Where's your favorite place to fish? What state? Let's start with your state. What's your favorite state to fish? St. Lawrence River. St. Lawrence River, really? <laughs> Not even a question. Awesome. When it's high. Yeah. The largemouth fishing this past year was not good. Oh, you're talking about largemouth fishing on the St. Lawrence Seaway? Yes. Really? Because everybody goes for smallmouth, and I, I like them. Catching five, five and a half pounders is fun, but the largemouth are proportion. They don't make any. Their proportions don't make any sense. They're just so, They're so thick. thick and stocky. I'll be darned. But as far as beauty goes, my favorite place to just be at is Lake of the Woods. I've never fished that. I really wish Canada would host a tournament. 
because the town they got up there is where Jeff Gustafson's from. Okay. And uh, it's just a beautiful lake. Something like 20,000 islands on the lake. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Small mouth are getting bigger. They got lake trout, walleye, pike, musky bass, everything. Look at that right there. What is that? Extra bass. Huh? It looked bassy to me. Yeah. Is there a carp in here? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there is. Okay, there's one right there. Yeah. Two of them, actually. So that could be what we're seeing. Could be what we're seeing. So let's say, let's say a tournament situation. If you'd already fished however long this has been, 20 minutes, if you'd already fished this, would you kind of abandon this at this point, not, not getting a bite? No, because uh, I, feel like, I feel like we're working our way to where they should be. I feel like this next couple hundred yards is, is what I would assume would be the best. Okay. And then if we don't catch them here, then my next step in the process of elimination is you know, it was really shallow coming through there. You know, it was only this deep. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get a little deeper right here. The other part of that is I would go to that side of the grass bed and fish maybe some of that scattered grass out there. Okay. Uh, you know, I just, they've got to be somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just too much grass. That may be the problem. There's so much grass. Gotcha. Uh, you know, we just, we're going to have to hit one of them on the head. And if they're not feeding, yeah, you know, yeah. that's one of the things, you know, as much as anybody being from Texas, you know, these are Florida strain fish in here. They are the most temperamental fish I know. in the world. They bite one day and they're gone the next. Yeah. Northern strain are just too easy to catch, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's blowing or slick calm or cold or hot. They just tend to bite. Bass in Minnesota bite. Like, yeah, that cast that I made right there should have, should have resulted yeah. in it. In between two logs. You know the there's one there. How many docks do you think, percentage-wise, have a bass under them? <laughs> oh, wow. Like, where would we be talking about? I think anywhere in the country. If you were to add all the docks, what percentage of them actually have a fish? Whether or not you catch it. All of them in the country. Ooh. I'm sitting here thinking through my mind, you know, of a lake that's got grass out in front of the docks or, okay. uh, you know, so I would, the number initially was going to be really high, but then with, with, with any lake and all lakes, it's probably like 50, 60%. Got it. What would you say? I just, it's a great question. Again, anecdotal, but I feel like most places I go, if I catch a bass on like 20% of the docks, I feel like there's one on at least like 67. Right. So the thing is way more fish in our bodies of water than, than we, we ever give them. Than we ever see. Yeah. 100%. Comment below, y'all, who you think is going to catch one first. <laughs> Mr. E squared or myself. In a game like this, I think it's a random chance. <laughs> It is, because, I mean, I'm, there's no way I can ever front end you or you can front end me. You know, no. we both have just as much opportunity to catch one as the other, wouldn't you think? Yeah, you got the left side of the boat, I got the right. Right. We're both making random casts. Okay, so now he's switching. Well, like you said, we've both been throwing a frog for a while. I'm going to maybe throw something, flip it or something here. Okay. Find me a, a bait to flip in there. That's what we like to see. What temperature water do you find that grass tends to die? I guess it depends on the species of grass. That's a good question. That's a great I, question. I mean, we got we had a drop from let's just go with a safe 90 degree water in the summer. Mm -hmm. to now it's 74. I see some of this milfoil is starting to look brown. A it little is. bit brown. Yep. It does that. I think it just in the fall. But I also think that we've had. Uh, Quite a bit of, you know, we had a couple of rains come through and, and this okay. water was muddy in here. So a lot of times if you shake it, 
it'll turn green. It's just a film oh. on it, you know, like if you were to like take that water and like you move it and then now it's oh, all green. Oh, it is green. Yeah. See oh, all the brown, all the brown. That That's came a off? good tip. I had never, never seen that. You, if, you, if you think your grass is dead or brown, give it a shake and it might just be some, some algae dirt growth on it. That's why, it, you know, it's such a great filter. You know, when you think about it, mm -hmm. uh, you don't see many lakes that have grass that the water's muddy or Correct. if it is muddy, it's muddy for very long. Yep. And it is already hot and sunny. I know. I don't know what I was thinking wearing jeans this morning. It was cool this morning. I looked at the weather. <laughs> Explain that deal on your hat. What is that deal on your hat? This here, I'm not running it today um, because I have respect for your locations, but it's a, a GPS tracker. Ah, cool. And so when I'm fishing new bodies of water, it links to my phone. And whenever I catch a fish, I can mark the waypoint. Ah, cool. And I know they had a connection with Lowrance that when you marked it on your hat, it also marked it in your graph. Yeah. But I don't know if that is still a feature they had. I think it had some glitches. What's it called? A Angler. Okay. A-N-G-L-R. But most of the time, if I'm fishing, you know, 40 new bodies of water a year, marking a waypoint on my graph just doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Right. Because usually I forget to transfer waypoints anyways from graph to graph. So before I go to a lake that I haven't been to in a year, I'll check my phone to see where I caught those fish. That's cool. Just, it's just a digital, yeah. you know, log book. And every time you press it, it keeps track of what the exact weather was when you caught that fish. Huh. I forgot to uh, put me a bobber stop on here, Tyler. Uh -oh. I was in a hurry. I need to, uh -oh. I can't get it down in the deal. Well, yeah, I, I, so I, I've been flipping or uh, fishing a frog. I know maybe it's not wise that we both switch, but. No, go ahead. If you're gonna flip in the mats, I'm gonna throw a little grass jig on the edges. Oh, that'd be deadly. See if deadly. See if that's, that's what, what your uncut's want. about. Figuring it out, right? Yes. So I'm just adding a little bobber stop here. I help keep that weight. Oh, just the weight down next to the the bait. I don't I don't normally like throwing them unless I have to. I obviously have to here in this thick grass. So you normally don't peg your peg your Texas rigs? Yeah, if I can, if I can, yeah. I'd rather not if I don't have to. Okay. Gotcha. It definitely deepened in here. Yeah. Significantly. And the water dropped one degree. Ro 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 one sec. It rose one degree. Got hot. Well, that's probably because it's such a cool night last night that shallow water cools off mm -hmm. or warms up a lot quicker. You know, probably later today that shallowest water will be the the warmest. Mm -hmm. Who's getting a phone call? It's ringing. Edwin's getting a phone call. Yeah. This is Johnny Morris speaking. <laughs> I'd be saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> ah, we gotta catch one. Yes, we do. I was feeling the frog to start, and now I'm not feeling it. So many times that frog bite is a little bit later in the day. Have you noticed? I mean, really? Body, I feel like it is. Just let it warm up, especially oh. this time of year. Okay. Do you find more like a walking bait on the edge? Um, Is better early? Well, yeah, like, you know, I, just back in those mats, it just seems like later in the day. You know, one thing that you know and I know we always try to listen for is those bluegill popping underneath there. And yeah. Yes, we've seen a lot of bait, but we haven't heard any of that this morning yet. <laughs> Stick with us, folks. It's a very high, high, high pressure day today. <laughs> But I feel like once we figure out what they're doing and get in an area that has them, it's going to be, it's going to be lights out. 
So I hope you all are enjoying it and watching, learning. Yeah, I guess uh, uncut, we can't, we've got to catch one. We, we do have to catch one fairly soon. Although I think having a guest, people will stay for a little longer. Yes, this dropped off to, what's that, six feet? It'll get to 10, 12 here in a minute. It'll get to 12 feet in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. So this is a creek here, yes. and you're saying when it flows, it deposits, you know, sand and everything yes, onto that flat? Yep. Okay, yep. that's why it made it shallower. That makes sense. So that's a great question. Like, what is the, the most you, you're, of the YouTube videos you've done? Like, what's the one you're most proud of? Maybe not the most viewed, but what's the one you're the I most? I mean, my wedding video. Okay, that's a great answer. I spent 75 hours editing that. Oh wow! So it's it was a project and a half. So fishing wise. Fishing wise, my most proud video. Oh man. Let me, let me think on that because I feel like every few months I find one that I'm like, man, I like that video. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I've got some videos that I'm just like, this is an awesome video yet. It doesn't get any views. No. I know, I know. Oh, I, th I think the coolest story, and I'll probably share this on your podcast, but so I'll, actually, I'll save the detail for your podcast. Okay. It was a how to rig every soft plastic video. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah. And it was, it, it was one of the most important videos on my channel. I'll probably tell you about it later. But uh, it was at a day that I caught no fish when I filmed that, and I was just kind of frustrated. And it turned out to be one of the most important videos so far for me. Oh, isn't that cool how that works? So that honestly, and that's the, Levi was actually, that's the first one he ever edited, was that video. That's funny, I got similar stories. Some of our most videos are ones we held on to the longest because we didn't think they were very good. <laughs> I kind of think though, like production wise, I've got a series called Monsters of Minnesota. That was my first ever, you know, high quality cameraman travel series. Yeah. And I traveled around Minnesota and had guests and interview segments and I was really proud of that. Because I put the whole thing together and had. Oh, holy cow! Holy it's cow! Going. It's a big one too. It's a real big. There we go. There we go. Good job, Come buddy. On. <laughs> oh oh yes. That's why we came here. That's what we came That's here for. That's why we came here. Bring it in. Oh gosh. That's why we came here. You got him. Good job, man. <laughs> nice job. Oh man. Yes. You did it. Good job. You did it. Good job. So. You might have taken us. 45 minutes, but you got one. What happened there is I just thought, I feel like a jig on the edge for yeah. those fish that are yeah. obviously around here, but needed something to fall next to their next to their face. Right on that isolated clump of grass. Got the job done. Sweet. Good that's five, a, six pounder. That's a five, yeah. six yeah. pounder. Yeah. Are we allowed to put these in the box? Or are we gonna um, put them in the, in the water, you think? Whatever you wanna do. It's your channel, buddy. I say we get a picture, some good pictures, yeah. and let it go. So we'll see you guys after we're done uh, taking pics. Let's go. All righty. Five pound, Oklahoma. Letting this baby go. Beautiful spots on its head and tail. Let's go, Edwin. Awesome job, Tyler. Way to get it started. Had see. a little pressure on me doing this uncut stuff. I was like, man, we got to catch some fish. And I'm being risky. I'm flipping 20 pound fluoro here. Uncut is back. After that fish release, Edwin and I are back. If you commented that I would catch one first, first you off, were right. thank you so much. <laughs> Cause I didn't believe in myself. I did. But we got the job done and Just one of our decisions to change led to a fish catch. That's right. So now we're gonna use that to our advantage and keep doing that. Edwin is still punching through the map though. I think his bite could get better as the day goes on, right? As the fish. We thought, you know, we, that's what we that's what we think. It yeah. should happen. We just love the mucho grande ones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Especially when you set the hook and they fight back. Ugh. <laughs> Something inside me. 
That was a big one. That was a big one. Right out in the middle. Well, kind of. He was he was on one of the Yeah, on a clump. Yeah, just side like... clumps. You're saying as opposed to like the middle of the cheese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's an isolated piece. Was he suspended or on bottom? I do not know. I'm not sure how quickly I got the bite. I should have paid attention to that. For those of y'all who might wonder what jig I'm throwing, this here is the, uh, how's the lighting? Probably can't see it well. Outcast Tackle uh, Stealth Fighter Jig. This is the jig that old Seth designed, and it's the grass jig. So I'll have a link below for you guys. It's my favorite one for flipping around little, uh, little grass clumps. We could actually probably put a drop shot on. A drop shot? And throw around these clumps a little bit. As in a spinning rod drop shot? Oh uh, yeah. Wow. We, we got some super clear water here. I did it one time back here. I had a had a trip I needed to take somebody. It was a Wounded Warriors event. Yeah. And uh, we fished up through here kind of doing what we're doing. And I was like, you know, I know they're here. Let's let's get a spinning rod out. And we caught like a bunch. Okay. That's something I would not think of in this scenario. If I went through this area and threw a frog of multiple types, buzz frog, whatever, and I flipped it and I punched it and then maybe threw a swim bait or a, a fluke, I would leave. I wouldn't really think about a light line spinning rod. So you're kind of swimming that jig, aren't you? I uh I love hopping, like radically hopping it oh, yeah. at the base of the clumps. That's the way the guys do it in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And slaying bluegill or something. Yeah. Like, Still letting it get to the bottom. I'm not quite swimming it. But. As soon as you said milfoil, I thought, uh oh. This is in my blood. My dad's from Minnesota, so I think I'm really. I didn't know that. I'm meant to be a Minnesotan, deep down. You were born in Texas, though. Yeah, born in Austin. Okay. Grew up in Austin my whole life. Then lived in College Station, and then Waco, and now Frisco. So I've been everywhere but West Texas. Is it? Is that the biggest rivalry in Texas? A and M and Texas. I mean, is that Co the correct? Yeah, it, it it has been for the longest time. When we moved to the SEC, of course, the biggest sport. Oh, I missed him. Gosh, dog, the there's biggest, one right there. Throw the biggest there. sport left, um, which was football. And so people are trying to say that, oh, you and Texas rivalry is bigger. When it, when it comes to, to dollars spent and TV time watched, the game that we played against Texas on Thanksgiving was the biggest every year. Okay, cool. So I'm excited to play them again. Yeah. Both fan bases, I think, are excited. Our fight song is about them, so. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. And people give us trash for that, but we have a lot of weird things, so I'll, I'll take it. I mean, well, how is the fight song about Texas? <laughs> Goodbye to Texas University, so long to the orange and the white. So yeah, that's in the song. And then the end of the song, we all put our arms around each other, and we saw the, the name of Bevo used to be Varsity. So yeah. we sing, saw Varsity's horns off. So you see the Aggie swaying really? back and forth. We're singing about sawing Bevo's horns, Bevo's horns off. I'll be done. So yeah, we, uh, we, we, at least we still consider it a rivalry. Yeah. You'd have to if it's in your fight song. You can't just change your fight song. And of course we call them Texas University, not the University of Texas. Okay. So 
So you're sure you had one? I was about, yeah. I had two oh, so you're, you're punching a worm now, or flipping a worm. Well, just something a little bit lighter weight. Just, okay. I don't feel like they're up in those mats. Yeah. One thing that I'm feeling, so I just accidentally in, work, worked my jig all the way back to the boat, and I actually felt grass the whole way back. Yeah. So is this, does this whole saddle yeah. here have grass yes, down yes, in it? Okay. Yes, it does. So, so we, we, could, we could even find fish that aren't even on the sides. Absolutely. They're in the middle, okay. Could be. That's why I'm thinking, I mean, I, I really want to just, I'm just curious on that drop shot, just Yeah. what would happen. You okay if I get one out? I do not care. Matter of fact, I'm sure people would love to see you throw a drop shot around <laughs> matted milfoil. I think while you do that, I'm also going to re-rig okay. a, uh, a mag draft onto this rod here. Where did my baits go? Where did you put the baits at? Uh, I think they're in that center console, aren't oh, they? Oh, yes. That's where they are. I wasn't blaming him. I'm also the one who put him in the truck. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yum. So do you feel like we're cut right now? Are we still? No, we're still going. <laughs> that's the that's the re really interesting thing. Sometimes I've been like given a tip, and I miss I misspeak or I stutter, and then I think about it and I'm like. Oh, I can't cut this out. This is, this is just staying in. But one thing I think people really are loving about this series is that it gives them a realistic look of what happens. Of what happens. Yep. That it's not always bang, bang, bang. Well, I can tell you, I should really retie that leader. That leader's been like through the worst boat ride up at St. Clair those final couple days. And oh, your spinning rod? Yeah, leader? but I'm not going to. He's not going to. Do as, do as we say, not as we do, right? Uh-huh. That's correct. Retie your leaders, folks. Especially if you're... If the first fish you caught of the day was a five and a half pounder, you should probably retie your leader. So if you lose one, I'm laughing at you. Ooh, yum. Yum, 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 yum. I had the most interesting experience in Minnesota. I was fishing docks with a jig, catching nothing but bass, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna skip a mag draft under these docks, maybe get bigger bass. I got nothing but pike. Really? Yeah, it's like the pike avoided the jig, and the bass avoided the <laughs> swim bait. It was the weirdest thing. What's the biggest non-bass species you've caught in a tournament? In a tournament, you know, this past past event, uh, I'm reeling in a smallmouth, and I have a monster muskie eat the smallmouth. Um, like totally eat it, or just sideways? Gone. Gone. <laughs> gone. Never saw it. Okay. It was that big a muskie. Gotcha. Uh, biggest non-species. But you, you, know, didn't, you didn't catch the muskie. Uh, I, I fought him. I put my hands on him multiple times, oh, and okay. I finally got mad, and I just... I just let it break it. Got it. I was trying to, it's, I put it in a video, you know, for everybody to see. I was really, like, at that point, wanting to see it. Uh, I thought it'd be cool for the channel, you know. Yeah. I got to get some plastics out of back here. See, I do, you, the way you say that right now is so interesting to me. Because four years ago, pro anglers were not thinking about what's good for the channel. Yeah, I was, having a pretty, I was having a pretty bad tournament. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I was having a bad tournament. That's funny, though, because I'm, I'm telling you, like, I've always, even in my tournaments, thought about getting the shot, stopping to talk to the camera, but you guys are in such a high-stress, money environment that I can see how your tournament's not going well. Well... I thought I put some generals in here, but I don't, I'm not finding them. I'll just use this. I, can, I assume you're usually a bit more organized than this. Yeah. 
For everybody, my boat was in Shreveport and it didn't get to my house till uh, one o'clock in the morning last night. So it's not quite as organized. I just threw all my tackle back in it. We're making do with what I got. I didn't, didn't quite remember everything. Yeah, tournaments and uh, out here just filming is two different things, you know. We totally. I would have had a week to prepare for a tournament. Yeah. But you had all of about 25 minutes. Yeah. To prepare for today. And I've got my drop shot like on a seven four rod. <laughs> you know, it's it's not the. I, this was the rod I was throwing a tube on up there. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Are you okay? Yes, we're good. I've just got. I've just trade sides a little while. I've got to do something real quick. What do you got to do? Catch fish? No. You've got to organize your boat deck. <laughs> Is it bothering you? Yeah, like really bad. You're a little, little. Uh, you're pretty organized, are you? <laughs> I'm very organized. All of my reel handles, as you can see, they all have to be facing like this way. Are you even, serious? Even that one's a little bit messed up there. There Tyler. we go. Tyler. <laughs> That's funny, Tyler. <laughs> That's funny. See, look, look at how much better that looks. Even two of them are off, but. I didn't notice, I was looking forward. I, I noticed you catching a great big old bass. I did catch a great big old bass. And I didn't so, trip because my gear. So maybe I need to be more organized. Yeah, I think you'd win, I think you'd win more tournaments if you were more organized. Although you, Brian Thrift is the most organized out there. Have you seen his boat deck? I haven't, no. Oh, you can't watch live. His boat deck is meticulously really? organized. The rods are not only even in terms of the reels, the rod lengths are even from each other. Oh, wow. It's the craziest thing. Yeah, that's not me. And when he has a rod that's off, JT always points it out. Oh, really? He's like, uh-oh, Brian's disorganized today. He can catch him, I know that. Yeah. You know, you always have two options. You can always... Speed up if you're not getting bites or you can slow down. Mm -hmm. I just, I feel like this is the best area for us to get bites. So that's, I okay. chose to slow down. Instead of leave. Yeah, okay. I just, it's a, they live here. Yeah. I mean, year round. Well, if let's say somebody watches this video fairly close to when I put it out and they're dealing with early fall conditions like we are, let's say they try a grassy pocket flat whatever right. and don't have success and they've got a diverse lake with rocks and trees and such what's the next thing you'd move to hard cover hard you cover. know like for okay. us today you know if they're not in this grass then we need to go fish docks or lay downs you know and, and that's just that's what you you do okay. i mean and so many times in, in lakes like let's take the potomac river because it's just a prime example and it's mm -hmm. always what you have to figure out on the potomac river are they on the wood or are they in the grass and okay. and generally speaking at, at all the potomac river events that we would ever have one's always better than the other you know the top 10 will all be out of one of them gotcha we'll figure them out yeah. just part of it It's one thing about bass fishing. I mean, the success rate in bass fishing, like if it was a batting average or, <laughs> you know, a... Uh, uh, Completion uh, rate? Yeah, it's not gonna be very high. No. But for guys like you, obviously, it's a little higher than most, when it counts. Right? Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and that's one thing too, like, some of my best tournaments have always been in practice. I didn't catch very many fish. Okay. You know, it's a big part of elimination just as much as it is catching them. You know, if yeah. if if I was to have a tournament tomorrow, you know, I'm not saying today's over in here, but I, I'm not going to, you know, even though, you know, I, I just like, I'll spend the third day of the tournament doing something completely different. Yeah. Or, you know, the first day of a tournament, doing the third day on the water, doing something completely different than I did my two practice days. Okay. Uh, just for the fact that... Fish? Yeah, it is. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It's like he was just sitting there holding it. <laughs> and I'm like, I think that's a fish. Oh, and I told you I should have retied. 
Did Edwin Evers just call his own shot? Dead gummit. He broke off. I did. Well, the fish wasn't that big anyways. But, but still. Did you not see him? He was pretty big. He was like a, he wasn't like a tighter, real no, five no. pounder, but he, he was, was like a, he was two and a half pounds. Okay, Tyler. <laughs> okay. It's, I'm glad that this forced you to retie, though. Yep. I'm gonna retie. And it also showed us that fish are on the edge. Yep. Right now, because I got one on a jig on the edge. You got one on a drop shot on the edge. Let me see how bad this leader is. And yours was. Not suspended. Here's at the bottom. Yep, here's at the bottom. Okay. So I will make sure my jig gets to the bottom. My name is Jacopo Galelli. <laughs> I am from Italy. I wouldn't even know how to say his name. I was I was at the at Champlain for I don't know knockout round or final round whatever it was, and he was talking to some locals at the ramp. And they were asking him how he likes um, fishing in America. Right. And he said that he loves to, you know, fish different bodies of water and, and do different things. And so he feels like, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. He was like, I feel like I am myself here. <laughs> and in Italy, I was just an imposter. I, I couldn't do what I wanted. Really? And it was like, it was like heartfelt. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, cool. that, that's what this sport's about. I'd like to meet him someday. Sounds like a neat guy. Did you not meet him at the tournament? No, I didn't ever get to. You know, we're so busy in and around those events, and yeah. if, if the guy's not on your same uh, rotation, you know, group A or group B. Got it. You won't ever see him. Yep, yep. All right, this leader is not much better, but it's, let's just see right there. <laughs> As he snaps it off, yeah. <laughs> Let's not do that one again. We're going to make it work. That fish was stronger than I thought it would be. The one you, the one you hooked. I thought you were going to, you know, easily get that one in the boat. And... I think you'd have been shocked how big he was once he, he came up. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. But it's all right. I didn't land him, so they're always bigger when you don't land them, right? Yes. The legend grows. Nobody else does that. Do you guys do that? Yeah, comment below if you tell if you tell <laughs> stories. Man, that fish was just that just goes to show the mood that they're in. Cause I mean it, it was never felt the bite, never it was just a, a heavy, a little bit different sensation than say the grass that we're fishing. Mm -hmm. It just non-active, just sat there with it. Yeah. Kind of strange. Which makes me kind of want to slow down my jig a little bit. If they're just sitting there. Right. Also means you probably hit them on the head. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. That fish didn't come from a ways to eat it. Got him? No, sorry, I was snapping out of the grass. Usually when I catch a fish, Oh, I say gosh. So you're gonna know if I catch one. That's my catchphrase. You guys watching might notice that I do a lot more roll casts for my short presentations than I do flips. I don't know why I do that. I just kind of feel like it's more natural for my body movement instead of doing a pendulum. I don't know, I just wanted to point that out. What rods do you use? Loose. Awesome, good company. And Lin this, Lin this, Lin this really came out with is just my favorite reel ever I've yeah. ever owned. Lynn Reeves was always a good, good friend of mine. Lynn is a great guy. He worked for Bass Pro for years. I'm bummed they closed down their tackle shop. Oh, really? They're in uh, Springfield? Yeah. They had like office building there and tackle shop. You walk cool. in and kind of got a, uh, there's no clumps right here where we're at. I like it when we've got edges, you yep. know. Kind of, I just feel like there could be a fish anywhere here. When you got those edges, it kind of narrows down. 
where one could be. It should be a little bit more of an edge right up there. What's the max depth you throw a frog on? So if we got a mat over Ooh. here to the right, we're sitting in eight to 10 feet of water. Is that too deep? I think it's way too deep. Now okay, over there it. where that's at, it's not very deep at all. Oh, got you it. You know, so, but for me, yes, I'm not throwing one. Yeah, so like you, you have places, like there's a lake called Stillhouse in near Waco, mm -hmm. where the grass is matted in like 27 feet. Yeah. So you wouldn't throw a frog there. I would. You got it, okay. Me. Would you? No, I wouldn't. I'm just, I'm asking questions for the audience. Right. What's the depth for you that you don't throw a frog anymore? Three, four feet is kind of, okay. you know, and, and that's in really clear water. Yeah. You know, over mats. Now, if it's open water, that, that kind of changes. It, it's, okay. you know, five feet's okay in open water. Gotcha. But even open water, five feet's getting there. Yeah, I okay. think so. Cool. I can think of so many times when I was younger. Oh, pull, me too. Pull, pulling up on a grass flat on Lake Austin that's unbeknownst to me in like 16 feet of water. Trying to catch him on a trying frog. Trying to catch him on a frog. and It's not what you want to do. Well, it's just, it's so fun to catch him on a frog. Of course. <laughs> Turtle. Turtle? I think so. Hmm. This is slow for sure. And y'all watching, we could have gone to a private lake and caught tons of fish. Really entertained you, but I felt like, and I talked to Edwin about this, I felt like that wouldn't teach y'all as much because we could have caught fish on whatever we wanted and the fish would have bit. Out here, we really gotta use our brains this place gets fished a lot. I mean, we're here on a Monday, mm -hmm. and I'd venture to say there's a lot of boats in here yesterday, being a Sunday and the weather being nice. Correct. Oh! Got a bite? Yep, as I was swimming it, which is weird. Dang it. He went, thonk. What do you want? I love a good swim jig bite, man. <laughs> A good post spawn, like Todd and I go to Rayburn every post spawn and film, and that's a fun. So where could somebody see that, you and Todd fishing? Todd and I fishing is on my channel. Really? I think if you just search, just search Tyler's Real Fishing, Todd Faircloth, you'll probably find one or two videos, and he's beating me in every challenge, naturally. Todd is one of the best. He's had a rough few seasons. He has. I can't believe I broke that fish off. <laughs> I can. Because your leader, your, uh, your leader was bad. Hmm. I kind of feel like it's a... Oh, 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 gosh, dang it. How big was that? He was like a two and a half pounder. Okay, so they're in, they're in here. That was an active fish. Yes, it was. Wow. Kind of makes me want to throw a frog again. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, for about five minutes, I will. I think it's a great idea. Uh, the creek narrowed down a little bit. I got easier access to the edge of the grass on this side. What are you looking at? Oh, just looking to see, see what direction that active target's pointing. Oh. It's a good looking point right there. There's quite a few stumps right down that edge too, I think. That uh, you know, would be another yep. reason some fish would be down through there on that frog in that grass. Now y'all, I picked up the frog and I have it in my mind that I'm only gonna fish it on this point and that one. And if I don't get a bite or a blow up, I'll uh, go back. Sometimes the timing thing, I'll give it 10 minutes or one, 
one GoPro clip cycle. Other times it'll be a distance. I say, I'll pick up this lure for this amount of time and fish it there. Is that what it's kind of like for you, Edwin? It is. You know, I, I, I'm a guy that's going to have four, five, six lures, whatever I've got rigged up that I okay. feel like are going to work for the day. And I'll cycle through those. I'm not going to change a lot of colors or a lot of different stuff because I feel like so many of the times it's not about the lures so much as it is the location. Correct. You know, here we're on a body of water that I've been before, so I know this is a good location. So yes, we're cycling through some lures here because um, I feel like we're in the location. You know, it's a smaller body of water, so there's not a lot of locations we can go run into. But mm -hmm. if I was on a big body of water like Rayburn, you know, there's, they historically are gonna bite four or five baits whatever time of the year it is. Correct. It's a matter of covering enough water to figure out where they're at. So we've already found where they're at. We just gotta. I feel like there's some here. Present yeah. it right. Yeah, we've had four bites. Yeah. Is that a little tree sticking up right there? Yep, right there. In the, it's in the water. Oh, right here. Yeah. yeah. It's something. Okay. Catching. Throw that frog over there. That's what I'm thinking to do. Oosh. Oh. I don't think he's very big, but no. he had a bite. <laughs> we did get a bite on the tree. He was just un pequeño. I mix in a lot of Spanglish on my channel. I've taken five years of Spanish, and I'm not very good. Uh. <laughs> Was that to speak to any of your uh, pecan crews? No, no, it was in school. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to know more about it. I just had one right there. I think it was the one that might have bit your frog. It bit the tail off. Most likely. When is pecan season? About three more weeks from okay. start harvest, and we're getting really close. Very good. It's a. Uh, Kind of my getaway from bass fishing. I, I enjoy getting out there and getting on a tractor. And uh, you know, I was raised always working with my dad on a farm, and I just I wanted to raise my son the same way. Yeah. You know, good work ethic and time with him out there. So uh, that's awesome. We enjoy it. Heck yeah. And I've had his pecans, y'all. They taste delicious. Man, Tyler, you're gonna catch one surely down I there so. somewhere. This is my point where I'm stopping, so. You're fishing shallow over there. It's two, three foot. It's perfect, in my opinion. For... Okay, good. Get him, get him, get him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring it in. Big. Just a fish. Now that is a little one. <laughs> it was. Oh, it you was. lost that one too? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to like. I know your people on your channel are like accustomed to big fish. So They're, they are not accustomed. to I, big I fish. seen. I saw how big he was, and I thought, ah, I can't show your viewers <laughs> that one. <laughs> That'd be bad. All right. You know, you're I'll, from. I'll take the victory you're, here you're, on numbers. You're, you're from Texas, so everything's bigger and better down there. Kelly Jordan's really good. <laughs> yes. I can say that because he's one of one of my good buddies. Hmm. Am I am I allowed to make a, am I allowed to make a, a good a good joke? I have absolutely. You're uh, you're pretty good at catching those one pounders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Really good at it because it put three hundred thousand in my in my bank. <laughs> I so. know it did. I know it did. And I you think know, it's crazy how that happened because that, that spot was nuts. That spot in there, I'd caught many five and six pounders. And really? It, and it was a spot that uh, I should have won a couple of uh, previous events. Yeah. And I never could land them. Like it was just crazy how big they were and uh, the bites I had and just anything and everything that could ever go wrong went wrong in there. Dang. And uh, I go in there trying to catch those. Yeah. And uh, there's just a pile of pound and a half to two and a half pound fish come tournament day in there. Obviously, I'll take it. That was a three. That was a three hundred thousand dollars spot. Yeah, I heard yeah. it too. Is, is that up there? Yeah, it was shallow, and that's the second one I've heard really shallow. Okay, I'm gonna wait. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't text. This is not her, but I didn't text my wife good morning. So You're in trouble now. I, I might be in trouble. One sec. Hello? Hi, this is Sandy, and I'm giving you a call from the dealer service center. <laughs> nope. No, you're not. Let me text the wife. Now we're All back. All right. I, I really think we need to... I'd love to fish back out of here, uh, but I just... I know we're short on time today. Mm -hmm. Um, we probably need to make a move. Sounds good. So y'all, we're going to see you here in a few seconds after we've pulled the trolling motor up, started the big engine, and gotten to our next spot. Yeah. Man, it's killing me. You only got three rods on that side. Like, I've got a mess of rods over here. Okay, well, I only brought three, four, so. I keep wanting to set my rods over there on yours because that'd be <laughs> extra room, but I know you wouldn't like it because oh. you're all neat. Oh, I just noticed how bad your side is. <laughs> That's horrible. I messed it up earlier and you didn't notice. I, yeah. I did it on purpose to mess with you. That's fine. I had caught one, so. Okay. I wasn't as focused on it. When do you in the fall do the fish start transitioning away from the flat type deals and onto like the steeper bluff type banks? I think that's more winter, winter. Okay, you know, got it. It's it. really cold and the shad move out. You know, I think that water gets on into the 40s. Okay. Well, we don't get water in the 40s in Texas, so. Ours so it's be, probably different for you guys. Ours would be the 50s, you know? yeah. Heck, we had, we've had events here in, in Oklahoma that during snowstorms, they'd be one on a buzz bait. Uh huh. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, we have gone away from the big grass flat to kind of more open clumps, and we both switched. What did you switch to? I'm just throwing a top water here, just seeing if I can draw one up. Okay, walking bait, and I threw yep. a swim bait because I want to see if there's any cruisers around the area. I'm going to alternate a little bit to flipping some of these clumps. You're getting a call again. This is what it's like being one of the most successful anglers of all time. Yeah. All right, I'm putting a rod on I know when that hotline yours. bling. Yeah. That can mean one of <laughs> eight things. Isn't that the greatest thing ever when they, uh, that spam deal and telemarketer risk now on the iPhones, mm -hmm. you know? I never answer the telemarketer yeah. risk. Lately, I've been getting a few that say, um, what does it say? Political party. Really? Yeah. I got one that said political party. And I answered it and it said, um, hello, Mr. Anderson. Um, my name is Jim Bob from the Republican National Convention and we want to call on your support for whoever it was. That's cool. Yeah. But I'm glad I know who's calling. Okay, now you've committed a sin because not not only not only did you put a rod you put a rod on my side of the boat, you also left it on the rod tip. I was gonna see how long it takes. Oh, that's funny. Man, that's that a is sin. funny. I don't know how much longer I can do this, buddy. <laughs> One of my favorite bites ever is when they're when they're eating gizzards shallow, mm -hmm. mag draft bite, and you watch them chase it down yeah. and engulf the whole thing. Gosh, it is fun. Mm -hmm. 
That should have had a fish. Yeah. I have, put, I have felt that a bunch today. All right, I'm putting this one back on my side. Thank you. Yeah, you get you get one wrong kick though, and that rod's gone. That's why I got them little things on the end. Of it. Pretty sure, didn't you lose a rod in a tournament pretty recently? Oh yeah. Well, I saw you on live. Be like, where'd my rod go? I lost one in a high school tournament one time and didn't know it until I got back to my house and I was editing. Oh, that make you sick. Especially and I, when you're I was in high school because you don't have enough rods no. in high school. And I watched my, my, my heel kick it off the boat and I was like, there's no way. And I went in my garage and sure enough, it was missing. Dang it. And it was like, I think it was a Revo uh, STX or something. Right. So it was a nicer reel. Just bummed. Just having an extra reel in high school would have been nice for me. Yeah. Abu was early to the uh, high school sponsorships. Yeah, they were. We got 60% off as high schoolers. That was nuts. Wow. Big supporters. I feel like I know pros nowadays <laughs> on the opens who aren't getting 60% off. Have you noticed the money in the sport going down? Like big, the big time sponsor money? Maybe maybe not you. I haven't yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm I just so feel like I'm seeing companies sponsor more people for less money. Breaking it up. Probably so. I feel like the industry is pretty strong right now. You know, as far as coming through COVID and oh, such very, high very demand true. on everything. They can't keep up with the demand. Right. You see that up there? That's yeah, the second one I've seen yeah. over there. That's, that's why the boat's headed that direction. Well, you're throwing should be what they're wanting to eat. I was thinking the same thing about your bait. A little bit of wind, uh -huh. ripple. What's you, now you asked me what my favorite lake is. What's your favorite lake? I'm really partial to Falcon. I love it. I okay. just, I love Falcon. Um, I've always been, you know, excited about Toledo Bend and Rayburn back 10 years ago. I think, yeah, you know, yeah. I think they've changed quite a bit. They get 500 boat high school tournaments now. Right, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Had a battery? You do pretty well on the TVA. Yeah, uh, Kentucky Lake was always good. It's just kind of in a down downward spiral right it is. now. You know, with all the. Have you heard any news or anything? I've not. Got, got any I just better? know the Asian carp did a number to it. Yeah. I think to the crappie fishing too. That's what Jason Seelock's been saying. You know who he is? Oh yeah, I, I, the name's super familiar. I know I've talked to him before. Tell me again who he Bigger, is. You, well, he used to be a huge guy, body wise. Now he's slightly smaller. Uh, he owns Wired to Fish. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think he owns it. They've got a pretty powerful presence. Yeah. Them and Tactical Bass are the reason why I decided to go full time instructional. Of all the other YouTubers out there, the young and up-and-coming ones, who do you think is going to survive and have a really good channel? Me. Well, obviously, <laughs> you've already survived and got a great channel. Ah, oh, man. It's like really smaller guys right now. Oh, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Ah, I just don't watch enough. Yeah. I'm too busy making my own, and then the YouTube I do watch is not usually fishing. I watch a decent amount of your intros to see how Chris has been doing. <laughs> He can only do as good as the guy he's working with, so he struggles all the time. Aww. Got him? Yep. Awesome. Frog on the frog. Bite. Finally. There we go. On the edge. On the edge. He choked it. Yeah. No fish landing violation for me. Good job, bud. <laughs> nice. Give me some yeah. knuckles there. There you go. Fish number two on the pop and pad perch. Look how he Finally. Ate that. I had to Look move around a little that. bit. But I think they're on the edge today. Yeah, I do too. That's so many bites we've gotten have all been on the edge. Beautiful three pounder. 
We will take it all day Good long. Good job, dude. Thank you, friend. Oh, I should have posted that one on Instagram story. Let's catch another one, eh? Let's do it. On the edge. On the edge. I like to live life on the edge. Yeah. That bite was not loud. No, it wasn't. You didn't hear it, did you? Uh, yeah. Notice how dirtier the water is on this side? Well, it's had the wind blowing on it, right? That, yeah, just probably blowing all that stuff off of the, the grass, maybe. I don't know. Probably a... Uh, oh, Swim jig might be good too, or some of this spinnerbait, chatterbait. Get out of oh, here. that's true. They could be they could be cruising out here. No. Nope. What video are you thinking for your channel? I don't know. We <laughs> might be going to Grand. <laughs> At least I know I can catch them on Grand. Like no. I said, we got we got all day to do stuff. I'm in no rush to go anywhere. Chris needs to be home by six, so we're gonna have to quit at four. You don't ever know too on that edge, like how far did you throw back in on that edge and mm. you follow it to the edge, you know, a lot of times I Correct. always wonder. I don't think I threw it very far past uh -huh. the, the edge there. I'm surprised Alex is coming for, well, if you want to come for the week, because he's a teacher. So I don't know how we get that long. Oh, it's fall break. Oh, got it. Yeah, I'm excited about him coming. Don't tell him I said that. Oh, okay. No, super excited. <laughs> he's a good dude. No, I'm super excited. I just like, I had a bunch of stuff planned that week, uh -huh. you know, and I was like, I'd love to give that whole week. I just can't. Yep, yep. Well, and Chris can't either. Chris, Chris only had two days. Oh, every time that frog does it, I think it's a bite. I wish it was. There's another one. See, see him out there? Yeah. Dude, they're out here. I think that was a bass, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Which makes what we're throwing should yeah. be the deal. And if it's not, folks, then this is just not our day. Because this should be the juice. Well, shoot. Uh, yeah. Shoot is right. Big time, shoot. We can run down to that other end. There's a pretty good point down there. Um, I say, well, yeah, let's give a few more high percentage spots tries. Okay. So maybe places you caught them at before. Because we've been trying the whole fish in a big location and try to find them. Yeah. But. We only got a few more minutes left for this uncut, so. Need to narrow it down a little bit. What do you say we fish these two logs before we Let's go? Let's fish these logs. I'm gonna get my, you said uh, my high jig. percentage, so I'm, I mean, those are high, high percentage. And they're hard cover. Yeah. Because soft cover is not working so well for us. Although maybe it is working good enough. The bite's just tough. All righty. Let's see if we ran back in a creek, results in any fish. My pants are falling down. Oh, but now I want to skip a jig. Yeah. Gosh, why'd you have to bring me here? I'm gonna skip a jig while I wait. We got some grass once we get back in this flat. I do, I, okay. Under the docks? Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying, like, I think when we get around this corner, I don't normally fish back here. I just thought we'd try it, the wind yeah. blowing in. No, that was not good. That was horrible. Good grief. <laughs> Happens to all of us. I know. I also do most of my skipping with a roll cast, not a pitch. 
Yeah, I'm a little close. And we're going the wrong direction. At least for my comfortability level. Did you always know that you wanted to fish professionally? I did. Okay. I did, I did. It was never a question. That's awesome. Not ever. It was uh, something that I just loved doing. Didn't, my parents didn't fish or anything. They, uh, but they always supported it. Yeah. Oh, that's a rock point. Interesting. Work our way back in here, we got some rock. You hoping to capture a bite? Who's the coolest person you've got to fish with in your career? Coolest person I've got to fish with. Most cool. Oh, that's a good one. Man, what a bite. I'll let you finish your, uh, your oh, question that after that. That's a cool bite. I mean, he tried to murder that thing, didn't he? Let's go. Yeah. Heck yeah. That means I'm putting this jig down <laughs> and I'm grabbing the. He says you can't catch one on top water on a sunny day. I know. Nobody yeah. said that. That's fun. Thank we you. Thank love you. it. We love it. Yeah. All right, back to who's your favorite uh, favorite person you fished with. Caught me off guard a little bit there. I fished with uh, Carrie Underwood's husband, Mark Fisher. Okay. Cool, cool dude. Um, let me think. Bill Dance would probably have to be on top of all of them. That's what Alan Jr. said too. Just such an icon, such a neat guy. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Spent a little time in the boat with Rick Clun, Stacy King. Tommy Martin, all three of those guys were always super big, you know, legends to me growing up. Yeah. And uh, I just think cool individuals, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I'd have, without a doubt, Bill Dance. That's Jimmy awesome. Houston was super cool. You know, another big name guy that I just really enjoy time with. What do you think? What? A mud, little mud boil right there. Snapping turtle. Yeah. You just got done saying your favorite bait was getting that bite on a walking bait. I know. Bite. That bite gets me really excited. So look at that. Back of the creek, you found bait, correct, on your yep, graph? Yep, we did. Found we some did. bait and found a fish willing to eat a bait fish imitation. We did. And it kind of goes along with where you caught that big fish earlier. You know, it's just a correct. lot smaller version. Isn't it crazy when you get a bite on a topwater? I mean, if you were to lose those things, you think they're giants, you know, because oh, they, they explode on it so hard. Exactly. They have so much energy and power coming yep. at your lure and back down that you think it's twice the size of what it really is. Look at all the bubbles coming up back there. I don't know. See them coming up right over here to the mm -hmm. left of my bait? It's like carp feeding or super soft bottom. Probably not bass. No. I have a guess. And y'all, while it may look like we're just throwing in the 
middle of the middle of the pocket right now. It's actually pretty shallow, right? Yeah, it's two, three, four two, feet. Two, three feet. So the back of this creek here got nice and shallow. So throwing a top water in the middle actually makes sense. Whereas where the pocket began from the main lake, it wouldn't make any sense to throw in the middle because it's too deep. Too deep. You know, a lot of lakes, you'll find a little spot out in the middle, you know, the back, the end of a bay like this. It might be hard, it might be, a, you know, grass patch. They just, those shad blow back here, the bass mm -hmm. will, I just like the back flat pockets like this, this time of year. Okay, cool. It really goes against everything that I thought was right when I was a beginner angler. At least on Lake Travis, I always focused on like the steeper banks, not like the total bluffs. Right but the 45 type stuff. And I probably missed a lot of good you fish. You know, that's a good point though, Tyler, because on a lake like that, that fluctuates, here, you fish that bank. I want to fish out here in a minute. Okay. On a lake that fluctuates that much, um, you have to do that because, uh, you know, those fish don't get caught way back a lot of times, super shallow like this, but this lake here stays really constant. Yeah, that makes sense then. That, that that cast you just made. Some shallow little sticks. Come on. Huh. I just think these fish are not biting well today. I don't need That's what we're dealing with. It's not that we're doing anything wrong. These fish are just being stingy. Hard of fishing. I think we can go on back. Just Head back stay out. On, stay on this left hand side and no like this way. Oh, oh, got it. Will do. I would imagine there's a little water coming in. Might be able to catch one on a frog or something back in there. I mean I we can go out, I just now I might, say we let's head to the back and get one more. finish it out back here. That fish I caught was out in the middle. I it know it was. It wasn't relating to anything. Something in the water right there. Where's that? Right under my bait. Didn't matter. I did not see it. All right, you good? I just, I just want to. I don't know if it's a log or. Uh oh. It's pretty shallow out through there. Yeah, it is. A little bit of depth on this side, though. We got enough. Mm hmm. Hmm. Man, there ought to be one. Pretty sure this creek runs a year round back here. It's like a live creek. Mm hmm. Okay. Have you ever been out to California fishing? I have. Where'd you go? Well, Clear Lake. Clear Lake? I've been to Clear Lake twice. I fished there with Lucky Tackle Box back in the day when I was on their squad. They flew us out there and we fished. And actually, I fished with Matt Allen oh, cool. from Tactical Bassin, but he didn't, he didn't film. Um, and then the next time I went out was for the college Bassmaster event. Yeah. In 2018, and I borrowed a buddy of mine who had a boat out there, and we ended up finding the same spot. Turns out that the guy won the Toyota Series on the week before. Oh wow! And we just botched it. Lost. It we happen. lost. We lost too many big ones on a drop shot. 
Huh. It was a bummer. It's a cool lake out there. Isn't we it? had enough. We had enough uh, bites on day one to get the lead, and we just blew it. Could be a cave. I know. On the cave bass. Doesn't look deep enough in there to be a cave bass. <laughs> Got a log in front of you. Watch yeah. That. Well, shoot. Dad, you know shoot is right. Let's give it a few more minutes on this on this bank here and call it a day. Come on. Oh, brother. Brother John, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Well, you know what? I'm glad. First off, we caught some fish. I'm also glad I caught a big one. You did. You can go ahead and say it. You caught the big <laughs> one for the show. I'm happy. Oh, I wasn't bragging at all. No, I'm, just, no, it's I'm okay. happy that it's I caught okay. a big one. That's how fishing is. It is. And yeah. I hope the people saw that today in this version of Uncut. And uh, if you all want to see more, you know, celebrity guests like Edwin Evers on the channel for Uncut, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Again, please go check out his channel. And I think this one was filled with uh, a vast amount of knowledge. And, we talked and a lot about a lot of different, you know, things that we both do. So exactly. yeah, it's kind of interesting. And so again, if you guys uh, learned something, drop in the comment section below, check out his channel, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of TRF. Yeet.